All right, it's your boy Fi. What up, dude? Man, hopefully you went and watched the last three videos, which led me to the Who Wah Wah thing, which I suggest you go and check out the brother. Uh, I ain't got it up here. The brother teach me to be priestly. His latest video. Now this is called the Stolen Garment by Hugh Nibley. Just trip on this. Uh, Nimrod claimed his kingship on the ground of victory over his enemies. His priesthood, however, he claimed by virtue of possession the garment of Adam. The garment of Adam is the laws of Adam. All right. And, you know, to be fruitful and multiply, to conquer. Adam was the master of the whole earth. But just let's just continue. The legends of the Jews assure us that. It was by virtue of owning this garment that Nimrod was able to claim the power to rule over the whole earth and that he sat in his time. Okay, I thought it was some sort of beast outside or uh, some, a critter from the movie um, Tremors, but let me continue. Um, okay, and he sat in his tile while men came and worshipped him. The apocryphal writers, Jewish and Christian, have a good deal to say about this garment. To quote one of them, the garments of skin which God, the animal skins. Before I go into that, let me bring these out. I had these for about a month and a half now. But I'm going to go ahead and get back to this while that's loading. All right. Um, all right. To the garments of skin, which, uh, the garments of skin, which God made for Adam and his wife when they went out of the garden were given after the death of Adam to Enoch. Hence, they may, uh, passed through Methuselah and then to Noah. So the garments were passed all the way to Enoch, all the way to Methuselah, and then to Noah, from whom Ham stole them as the people were leaving the ark. Ham's grandson, Nimrod, obtained them from his father, Cush. So you know the whole story of him being seen in his nakedness. So him being seen in his nakedness is Ham stealing his garments, basically. That's why Ham is cursed. Now, let's continue. As for the legitimate inheritance of this clothing, a very old fragment recently discovered says that Michael disrobed Enoch of his earthly garments and put on him his angelic clothing, taking him into the presence of God. This garment of Enoch was supposed to be the very garment of skins that John the Baptist wore um, called by the early Christians the garments of Elias. An Arabic life of John the Baptist says that Gabriel bought it to John from heaven as the garment of Elijah. It went back, says John Chrysostom, in the beginning of the world to the times before which Adam required covering Thus, it was the symbol of repentance. Others believe it was the same garment that Herod and later the Romans put under lock and key when they wished to prevent the people from putting it on a candidate of their own choice and tell how the Jews tried to seize the garment by force and put it on John the Baptist, thus making him instead of Herod their high priest. Whatever its origin, the, garment, the wearing of the garment of repentance, a symbolic of life of man in his fallen state, was known to the most ancient Christians and practiced by certain ultra-conservative cults down to modern times. Okay, so um, I'm guessing we're trying to put the garments on Farrakhan and all these new leaders today, and we tried to uh, see it on Cam Newton during the Panther game, you know what I'm saying? Man's fallen state is the condition that we are in right now. We are fallen. We are not upright. We do not have any rulership, any claim. And to be a man, you got to have a home. 
A woman is not ours. Man, let me continue. Incidentally, the story of the garment, stolen garment as told by the old rabbis, including the great Eleazar, calls for an entirely different rendering of the strange story in Genesis 9 than the version in our King James Bible. They seem to think that the Surath, I don't know what that is, of of uh, Genesis 9 and 22 did not mean nakedness at all, but should be given its primary root meaning of skin covering. Read thus, we are to understand that Ham took the garment of his father while he was sleeping and showed it to his brethren. He took the garment from his brothers while his daddy was sleeping, maybe drunk, we don't know. Shem and Japheth, who took a pattern or copy of it, Salma, or else a woven garment like it, Simla, which they put upon their own shoulders, returning the skin garment to their father. Upon awaking, Noah recognized the priesthood of the two sons, but cursed the son who tried to rob him of the, his garment. So we all had these same similar things going on, but uh, Ham came and gave it to us. Maybe that's what the whole Egypt, man, let me continue. Um, by an extremely common type of substitution, the Simla of Genesis 9.23 could very easily stand for an original tisma, a copy, imitation, or pattern. Or, I told you it's the blueprint of, it's the, it's the spiritual blueprint of a warlord or a, a, uh, a man that dominates over all, Adam. Uh, or by an equally common type of transportation for Salma. Uh, Salma? A garment or a mantle, as in Micah 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 8. Even as it stands, Simla means only a woven garment and can hardly refer to the original skin article. This is apparently the source of the widespread legend that Ham stole the garment of Noah and claimed to possess the priesthood by virtue of his illegal, excuse me, of his illegal insignia. Ham's descendants, Cush and Nimrod, both Africans, though Nimrod in his wandering moved to Asia, Nimrod moved to Asia, He moved, but he was killed by Esau. He moved on to Asia, okay made the same claim it is interesting that according to certain ancient scriptures which the latter-day saints claim have been restored by revelation in our own age pharaoh who represents the afro-asian line of kush nimrod so pharaoh is the line who represents the afro-asian line of kush nimrod was blessed as to the kingship but cursed as to the compliment by allowing pharaoh to wear his priestly ones and I'm going to let you know, it's Jaguar skin uh, with some other royal. Okay, I'm going to keep going. According to a very old tradition, Pharaoh coveted the priesthood of Moses exactly as his ancestor Nimrod did that of Abraham. And it was said that the pharaohs of Egypt dressed in a skin garment to show that their origin was older than time itself. Oh, man. All right. According to the Talmud, Nimrod's great success in hunting was due to the fact that he wore the coat of skin which God made for Adam and Eve. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to sit here and flaws with you. I haven't got to it yet. A lot of people say the Talmud is evil and all this and all of that. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start looking into it to understand the supremacy of it. The supremacy of it. Great success in hunting was due to the fact that he wore the coat of skin which God made for Adam and Eve. And I and to keep it real, it's the laws also. The laws. The law which gave was given unto Adam was to do every animal of the field and name them. That's a law for us. The laws of Adam still stand. The laws of Moses stand because of we came out of Exodus and so-called God Jesus Christ who is Hoshua, Hosea, Yahshua, Yeshua. He gave the laws of returning back to our heightened state of man. So when Christ come back, we're going to have world power. We're going to be slaughtering and killing. And he is not going to be the soft ass cracker that we see today. Um, okay. There's a tradition that Nimrod becoming jealous of the rival hunter Esau. So Esau was big shit too now. 
Don't act like Esau was, he was a hunter too. He was a mighty as Nimrod, but he was about that Lizife. Let's consume, let's keep going. Lay in ambush for him and was defeated by Esau. Nimrod was defeated by Esau, who cut off his head and took the valuable garments of Nimrod, with which Nimrod prevailed over the whole land or earth. And he ran and concealed them in his house. These garments, says the report, were nothing less than the birthright, which Esau later sold to Jacob. The two, okay, next paragraph, we're down here. Two significant conclusions come from all this. One, that any historical reconstruction of what actually happened is out of the question. What has come down to us being a mass of conflicting legends and reports. And two, that these conflicting legends and matters of great importance, okay. Oh, the two, that these conflicting legends and reports nevertheless agree on certain main points that they are very old and were considered by the most learned Jews to present matters of great importance, whose significance escaped later ages. The priests and kings of antiquity certainly wore such garments, and the skin garment was often imitated in woven materials. In fact, the skin garment was itself held to be a substitute for a still older garment made of the leaves of the ficus. Okay, religiosus. We're going to check that out. The ficus. I'm understanding and see what the spirit of the ficus is, but let's continue. I make no apology for con conducting you into these lost bypaths of the past. You have often proclaimed in your professional obligation to be interested in all things, and especially the unusual. Still, there is a such thing as going on going too far, and it is high time I was showing you what a sober, factual, and common sense document of the book of Esther uh, Ether, the book of Ether. Okay, I don't know what that is. Really is. It say, let us return to Babylon. What the hell is this? All right. So I, I okay. What's this? All right. Okay. So I, I looked up this and it was the Nimrod's garment, and for some reason they showing uh these things. But uh, I don't think that was it. I'm not going to get out of that. So Nimrod, uh, that's Nimrod, and Nimrod is, okay, Gilgamesh, uh, let me continue, but uh, I'm out.